himself unto them as they strove, and would have said them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Same question they asked Jesus, who gave you the authority to do these things. Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons, and when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled, and durst not behold. And Mo God also mentioned in Exodus that the Pharaoh in Egypt that sought Moses' life died off. So he did not have to fear for his life when returning to Egypt. That means he could have stayed an Egyptian citizen without being persecuted still being free, being like a son instead of bond like the slaves. In the same way we were slaves in our sin and he, Jesus Christ, was free from sin and came to earth to save us. Same thing Moses was going to do over here. And Moses said unto the Lord, I'm jumping ahead. And when Moses saw it, I'm reading from verse 31, he wondered at the sight and drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and I am come down to deliver them, and 
<coughs> now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This was all exciting to the reader. From the reader's perspective, you see the things that God is seeing. And you know God is going to do something here. And so God also sees, ah, the Pharaoh died. I can do something now. So he comes to Moses and says, Moses, I've got plans. But how does Moses react? Now we go to Exodus 4 and verse 1. Exodus 4 and verse 1. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. So God comes to Moses. And God has a plan. While in Moses' life, he was completely rejected by the Jews. Because they simply couldn't believe that he could be a ruler and a judge over them. So he understood that convincing the Jews takes some effort. I'm going to tell a parable to explain what went what went through Moses' mind. Long, long ago, there was a king. This king had servants that had the bad habit or the sinful habit of smoking. And uh, every now and then he went to these servants of his and he told them my servant won't you consider giving smoking up and just not smoke anymore because um, I as your king do not want you to sm uh, 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 smoke so the servant sm asks um, are you going to make a law forbidding me are you going to kill me when I smoke and the king says, no, I just believe it's good for you not to smoke. And this is a personal desire of mine for you not to smoke. So please um, do not do that. So the servant says, I'm offended by what the king tells me. I don't want to do what the king tells me. Uh, tells me. King, you have to be gentle with us. And understand that the way you see things isn't always the way everybody else sees the things. Consider that we're addicted to smoking. It simply isn't the way you think it is. And so, every time when the king tries to do and approach his servants in that way, he's got no success because his servants react violently. And some of them don't. Some of them try to understand the king, but, you know, they're addicted, so they... Don't stop smoking. If you're a Christian, this is a different sto story. Christians stop smoking because you've got the Holy Spirit working inside of you. Um, it'll help you break from that bond. And let's say one day God comes to this king and tells the king, King! I'll make your kingdom 
the greatest kingdom ever in the whole world. You might be the smallest kingdom now. And all you need to do is convince your servants to stop smoking. Without making a law against it. And that king would be surprised and think to himself, why would God come to me with this thing that's um, a challenge? Because how do you work right through the minds of people? People are very steadfast in the way they work and approach and um, imagine things. The best ways for um, something to be done by God, but just to have me coming to them. What's that going to do? And so we need to understand Moses, when God comes to him and tells him, you're going to get the people ready to leave the land. And Moses know, knows the heart of the Jews. He was the one that tried to represent the Jews. He was the only free man in Egypt that was a Jew. He said, no, I didn't want, no, I don't want to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I want to be called a Jew because I am a Jew and I'm going to represent them. And a person knows his people when he decides he wants to represent them. The president of a country usually understands, okay, um, if he's American, he'll know, okay, this is how Americans think. Or if he's South African, okay, he'll think, this is how South Africans think. Or if he's um, Zimbabwean, then you'll know, ah, oh, this is how Zimbabweans think. Because he was in that land. And he represented them. So Moses knew. It wasn't just, um... Moses imagining some other things. Moses spoke truth when he said, These Jews, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And this might have been the case. But even though that was the case, that still shows a lack of faith in God. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will not leave Moses at that point because Moses is showing his lack of faith and that's not good in the sight of God so he addresses it firmly
And he shows Moses what the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will do. Chapter 4 and verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. Without being trained, he took up a serpent. Moses took up a serpent just like that. Never been trained in his life before. What does that remind us of? Now we go check Mark 16. And verse 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Exactly the type of sign that God has used in the Old Testament, He was using in the New Testament. And the Lord said unto Moses, this is Exodus 4 verse 4, Put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And, it's more, it's more, and the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom, and he put his hand in his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again, and he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they, believe, if they not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Speaking of the turning the flesh to leprosy and the leprosy to clean because that's three signs altogether the snake turning from a rod to a snake and from a rod back to a snake okay, maybe we can consider this for the hand from leprous from hole to leprous and from leprous to hole Way, way beyond anything uh, seen uh, in frequently in the past 2000 years. Was well, seen in the time frame of the Acts. They yielded people just like that. Hundreds of people. Just like that. Well, let's note something over here. How much faith did Moses have? Did God tell him that he was going to be healed? Did Moses have something to believe in that he was going to be healed? Um, was there any mention of the fact that God taught Moses that healing is a thing that he needs to believe in? 
No faith was involved in this specific healing in the Old Testament. So when God uses Jewish signs in the New Testament, is it really expected from each believer to have faith before the healing comes? with the Jewish signs? But if you don't believe those signs are Jewish at all, what were they? Gentile? Were they for no purpose at all? There is a story in the Bible I'm going to continue in, Act, in Exodus chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 8 And it shall, uh, shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the uh, voice of the latter sign. So in a sense this is also prophetic of Jesus coming and uh, his preaching was the first sign and the miracles he did and after words when he died rose again went to heaven um, and his disciples did the um, new uh, signs that was also the um, second sign and that's usually the moment when the Jews are supposed to react and say ah okay something happened We're going to um, verse 9. And it shall come to pass, if they will not also believe these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So this refers to the third time there will be signs. So the first time was when Jesus came um, and did signs. The second time was when the apostles did signs. And the third time when there was going to be signs is in um, the Great Tribulation, Jacob's Trouble, the Daniel 70th week. Um, and you will see in Revelation there is a part where the water actually turns to blood also. So, in that time frame, there will be signs again, so that the Jews can realize, ah, okay, we're in Jacob's trouble right now, God is going to um, give us a hard time, because the Jews actually know that Jacob's trouble, uh, trouble is coming, um, and that God is going to purify them with Jacob's trouble. Ask the rabbinical Jews, they understand the Old Testament regarding that. Um, but they also know that God is going to save them from the Antichrist, which is also prophesied in the Old Testament and New Testament. And after that, Christ is going to set up his reign on earth. He's going to rule from Jerusalem in Israel. <clears throat> so when the signs start up again, um, we have some big problems. Because um, then there will be uh, tribulation all across the world and um, there will be great problems how the Antichrist will um, just destroy society uh, that is if you will see it some Christians I'm lying all Christians will not see that time frame. That time frame is for the Jews. Christians are not going to see that time frame. Not because we do not deserve tribulation and not because um, there is no tribulation in our lives. Uh, Christians are going to go through a lot of tribulations. But Jacob's trouble and Daniel's 70th week is ultimately Jewish. 
but that is a long study for another time frame and um, I would suggest you um, go and read up about it and uh, look at um, the materials of uh, good dispensational teaching and uh, I'm sure if you're diligent and motivated that you will be convinced. We're going to Exodus 4 and verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither therefore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Who, or who maketh the dumb or dead? or seen, or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. Doesn't this remind you of Jesus that says go and preach the gospel? Now therefore go, says God to Moses. We're at verse 12. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. So Moses was going to speak in a tongue, his mother's tongue. And the apostles were going to speak in tongues. That was necessary because it's not like today where everybody is able to speak English. In that time frame, there was um, Latin and Greek and Hebrew, and Aramaic, and hundreds of different languages. To tell the disciples, you're going to go out and spread the gospel, would be um, perplexing to them because they will be thinking, what are we going to say to these people in languages that, we're, that we struggle to speak? And so Jesus tells them, you're going to speak in tongues. Just like God was with Moses' tongue, you'll be with your tongues also. Because there's hundreds of tongues in the world. And um uh, some later episode I will uh, thoroughly discuss the subject of tongues, but um, I'm going to leave that uh, for now. First, I first want to um, thoroughly get the subject uh, down that the signs have ceased and that there is a reason why. And that's going to take um, all, a whole lot of um, scriptures, uh, but uh, if you're uh, attained at what I'm sa uh, saying, maybe you've been convinced up to now. <coughs> so we're going to go from verse 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh dumb, or deaf, or seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore, go, and I will be with thy mouth, mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother, brother, 
I know that he can speak well, and also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart, and thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and I will teach you what ye shall do. So, <clears throat> to solve the problem of Moses saying, tongues isn't going to work, God said, it is going to work, because I'm going to be with the mouth of Aaron, and I'm going to be with your mouth. Two people speaking in their mother tongue the words that God gives their tongue to speak. Supernatural. Jewish signs. And verse 16, And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be unto him instead of, a, of God. And thou shalt take it this rod in thine hand. Therewith thou shalt do signs. And um, another thing, uh, I believe it was Aaron's rod that also turned into a snake. So it wasn't just Moses that took up serpents. Referring to Matthew 16 again. And so, when we see all the similarities between um, the signs in Moses' time, the signs in um, the um, biblical times all through the Old Testament and the signs in the New Testament, there is a visible reality and this reality is that there is something like Jewish signs and so when Jesus sends out the apostles he sends them with signs this is why Paul calls these signs the signs of an apostle and um, you can go to 2 Corinthians and chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. So when these signs were wrought among them, the Jews understood, ah, this is what's going on. God works. He's showing signs and wonders. In Jesus' name, Amen.